It's time for another round, or should I say maybe the first round of Criterion Blu-rays for 2024, and I believe my first one in general. So, as many of you know, this one is the late February flash sale update, I would call it, because I purchased these during the flash sale last month, but I had two other videos prioritized before this one, and as you can see, we got a double dose of Billy Wilder, and one film that's going to be in massive competition with Anatomy of a Fall. One that will be released in the collection, I believe, if I'm remembering, it's going to be in May. So, that's going to be insane. So, we have two Billy Wilder films and, um, and a film from Otto Preminger, all in the 50s. So, we're going to start this up, obviously, with the first one, Spy Number 396 from 1951 by Billy Wilder. Ace in the Hole, or as it was originally when it first was released in, when the movie first came out as The Big Carnival, starring Kirk Douglas as this insane, like, newspaper reporter that just made, like, an insane event to rescue one guy in a massive mine, so, that's, that's kind of insane, so, and then just became a big tourist attraction, so, yeah, Billy Wilder has a lot of a couple of his films in his collection. I think The Apartment's the biggest one in his, but Ace in the Hole is definitely one of his more over, um underappreciated. I I don't know how to pronounce it, but obviously this is um one of his big other Oscar movies. It wasn't as big compared to like a lot of his other films, like Some Like It Hot, which we'll get into. It only got a screenplay nomination, so that was his only nomination, but. Yeah, this was, I think, Kirk Douglas before Spartacus, so what an insane role Douglas did. That was just insane how his performance was, and I loved the concept of this crazy person and how this event of rescuing this person really worked out just really was an amazingly kind of like a fun movie just to see everything going on while they're all rescuing this one man. Um, I actually, unlike some of the other ones, I've actually have explored... A bit of some of these Blu-rays, um, and actually have read um, their um, essays on them. And for Ace in the Holes, this one actually kind of has like a newspaper style into it. Like that's insane. It's kind of like um, the uh, essay booklet for uh, Town Bloody Hall, I believe. The documentary I have in the collection. It's kind of like that, and it's like a like a miniature newspaper that costs like what was it five cents or something? Yeah, five cents. So. In the 50s, I don't, like, I think it would be, what, what, 10 or $15 now? I'm not really sure, but definitely a great movie, I would say. In the middle, we have Spy Number 600. I did not realize that. That's a milestone number. You know, from 1959 by Otto Preminger, Anatomy of a Murder. This courtroom drama is stars the one and only James Stewart, who you might know from It's a Wonderful Life. With a lot of big notable names, another one actually featuring George C. Scott, who actually, he and James Stewart both got Oscar nominations for their performances. Preminger did got nominated for director. Um, the film was a Best Picture nominated film. I believe it lost to a Ben, -Hur. I think it was Ben Hur was the one that won the Oscars. Yeah, because that was a dominated year for Ben Hur, so not good here for that movie, but yeah, both of these came out the same year, so yeah, it was the Ben Hur dominance, so. Obviously, this movie's now going to have a bit of a tense competition, I would say. When when I watch Anatomy of a Fall um, for my Oscar movie marathon, I will see if how if both of these similar films are so similar. I don't know, but I will see how it is because I know it's going to be two different perspectives because this one is more the perspective of a lawyer instead of a witness. So, and obviously with James Stewart being the lead, it kind of does go a bit, it's slow a bit because you just have to get with the lawyer and with the defendant and then obviously the defendant's um girlfriend or wife i believe and then but once they get into the actual courtroom that is the judge is actually played by a real life judge by the way um that's when the movie starts to get good and this movie you can actually view one of the few 50s movies that is available for free on internet archive so yeah along with uh, seven samurai this is another movie i was lucky to find on the internet archive um Obviously, this that image you've seen in the poster in the openings, that's probably the most iconic promotional material for that movie. 
um, definitely really insane core drama. Um, I did look at one of the supplements, which was a newsreel footage of them in Michigan doing um, of a report of them all together for a dinner and then showing, like, I think some of the first courtroom scenes of early stages of filming, which was the first thing they filmed. So really well thought out. I will probably maybe look at the other supplements whenever that will be. So, you know, that use of orange is just a standout in this cover. And speaking of 1959, also from the same year, we have Spy number 950, and our second one from Billy Wilder, Some Like It Hot. Now, this title seems a little bit familiar because um, for all of you Macy's Parade viewers out there, um, the, um, the 2022 parade, one of the Broadway musicals was Some Like It Hot. And although it's a little bit different compared to the actual movie, in fact, this is actually a remake of a remake because... Um, this was based on, I believe it was a French film in the 30s, and then Germany made a remake of that, I believe, a decade later, and then Wilder, who unfortunately couldn't find a way to, to watch the original film, adapted from the German script, and went with that, and it's just like, it's kind of complicated, it's like a star is born, so, yeah, this is technically a remake of a remake, so, um... Yep, that's why it was kind of considered adapted. And obviously it stars Jack Lemmon, Marilyn Monroe, as you can see in the center, and I believe, who was the last one? Uh, Tony Curtis, that's right. Yeah, Jack Lemmon was nominated for Best Actor. And, oh, well, having these two cross-dressing, yeah, I know it's a bit of an outdated subject matter because this was the 50s, you got to keep in mind, but if, if it was today, then you would have actually either two non-binary people um, or two trans male to do the role, like, two transgender people to do the role, I mean, um, and, and I think they're, like, in some, like, in Haunted of the Broadway, I think there's one non-binary person playing one of the characters, I believe, so, um, I ha I don't remember, but I will probably <laughs> look that up more when I get to that right year when I rank those songs, uh, but yeah, this is a really funny movie of just having these, t specifically these two guys cross-dressing as women to avoid a mafia, because um, they were afraid they were going to get murdered after they witnessed a murdering spree. When So they had to disguise themselves as women to be female musicians for a group in Florida. And they encounter with Monroe. Both kind of have a passion for them. Especially, mo mostly with Tony, Tony Curtis. Which is why Monroe is kind of looking at um, Curtis in this cover. Because, and then... Like he because he would also cross dress as an as another different type of man as like a British sailor or something like that, and they had to deal with this journey here. And this movie was just all around fun. But the last line of the movie, if you've seen this movie, it's one of the best movie ending lines of all time. It not just is also really great, but also it was hilarious and how it ended. So it is definitely a great conclusion to that. So. What a fun movie it was, and definitely some great use of music. This was also nominated for a couple of Oscars. Wilder did get in for director, but the film did not make it in the picture line. I think if I'm correct, Anatomy of a Murder, I, I don't have the my laptop on me. I think this got in picture and this got in director only, but I know both of them got in lead acting odds, both, both losing to Charlton Heston and Ben-Hur. So both of these films got kind of badly... We're in a wrong year when Ben-Hur was the big dominance. So that's kind of it for my Criterion Blu-ray update. These were three Oscar movies from the 1950s. Where I'm still kind of in that route, but I'm kind of watching a few other movies more so than these. And not to mention, of course, budget reasons, especially since we're still in tax season. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. And let's see what other rounds of the 50s were going to be.